Hi everyone. So today we're going to go through how to interpret graphs within the GAMSAT. Um, two of the big graphs that I see a lot of people struggle with and the ones that I know that I got quite confused on, especially in the beginning of my study, was these ternary graphs. Um, these are the ones that look like triangles and they essentially ask you uh, to determine uh, what point a particular solution or sand or you know, it could be anything really, but what point something occurs based on uh, some presented information. And the other graph that I struggled with was oxygen dissociation graphs and exactly whether or not right shifts or left shift shifts actually uh, result in increases in oxygen binding affinity. So we're going to go through both of those, those graphs today. So in this one here, in this ternary graph, it's just an example from the Des O'Neill uh, multiple choice book. And essentially we're given that point X is 60% sand, 25% silt, and 15% clay. So the first thing that I like to do is draw this out on the graph itself. So point X here is 60% sand. So that's going this way. It's 25% silt. So try and draw a nice straight line there. And we got 15% clay. So what that's telling us is that for the clay here, the percentages go horizontally. So this, this one here being 10%, 20%, so on and so forth. Uh, with sand, they actually go towards a diagonal there. So they're going this way, starting from zero here uh, all the way to 100. And then we got silt, and silt just does the opposite. So it goes diagonally downwards. So this part here being the 10%, uh, the 20%, 30% and so forth and so on. So I just like to draw that out initially just so I don't get confused um, because it's very, very easy to then, like if you don't draw it out and you don't understand this from the very beginning, it's very easy to start making the mistake that, you know, for example, this is 80% because of the horizontal heel here, but we know that the silt is actually this, this part there. So just an example, if I were to ask you what point A is, how would you go about doing that? Um, I'd recommend just pause the video here and see if you can do this yourself. Uh, but if not, we'll get straight into it. So as I said earlier, it's best to draw out where the lines are going. So for the sand, this way. For the clay, it's going horizontally. And for the silt, it's going the downwards diagonal. So for point A, if we want to find the percentage of sand, it would be going upwards in that, that diagonal there. So we could say that's 30% sand. Um, we can also see on the graph that with respect to clay, it is 10% clay. And then lastly, um, if we look at the silt, it's on, whoops, apologies, iPad errors. <laughs> uh, if we look at the silt, it's roughly 60% silt. Uh, gotta stop doing that. Silt. So silt is 60% silt and that equals a hundred percent. So that's something that, uh, we can also do to double check that we're right. Um, because all these areas should add up to 100%. So with point X, uh, if we add up the percent clay, silt, and sand, that will add up to 100%. And with point A, all these you know, 30 plus 10 plus 60, that also adds up to 100%. So that's a way we can double check that what we got is actually right. So for another example, what would be the percentages of point B? Uh, if you want to do this yourself, again, just pause the video. If not, we'll get straight into it. So for point B, if we look at the sand and we follow it up here, we're looking at about 30% sand. 
if we look at clay, and again, clay is at the horizontal there, it's 50% clay. And for the last one, for silt, if we follow it down there, it's about 20% silt. And we can double check our answer again just by adding all these up. So 30, 50, 20, that equals 100%. So again, that just confirms that we got the right values for point B, or at least just reassures us that we got the right values. So just moving on to oxygen dissociation curves. I know this was something that I got quite confused about, uh, especially in the beginning of my GAMSET study. And I think it's incredibly important to understand because it, it does occur quite frequently in the GAMSET. You know, it's not only testing how well an applicant can understand data and read a graph, but it's also testing their biology theory. So with the black curve here, we just got a standard oxygen dissociation curve. Um, with increases in the partial pressure of oxygen, we see that there's a corresponding increase in the ox oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. So in the exam, you might be told that with the onset of exercise, there's an accumulation of hydrogen which results in a decrease in pH. And it might ask you what the, what, what sort of shift would we expect in the oxygen dissociation curve? So the first thing we'd have to realize is that um, with exercise, usually there's an increase in metabolism. The muscles require more oxygen so they can um, produce ATP to allow that muscle to contract. So we would expect that uh, the red blood cells would be releasing more oxygen. So if we look at our graph here, uh, for a right shift, right, it's saying that for any given partial pressure of oxygen, so let's uh, take this point, for example, for, the, for a right shift here, if we look at a partial pressure of this, there is a decrease in the O2 sat. So the red cells have released more oxygen. If there was a left shift, it would say that at this partial pressure, these red cells are retaining their oxygen. So with exercise and with an increased metabolism and an increase in metabolic demand, we would expect that the red cells for any given partial pressure would have less oxygen. And this essentially allows the, the release of oxygen to tissues that have a high metabolic demand. So I think the biggest tips for interpreting graphs within the GAMSET is always read the axes and the title of the graph first. I think this is something that's incredibly overlooked and usually always skipped. You know, people are always so excited and so ready to try and interpret the data within the graph. Um, but I think it's really important to understand what that graph is trying to show us first and we can do this by not only reading the title, but also the axes. And if you understand what the axes are showing and uh, how the correlation works there, um, you'll just get a better understanding of that graph as a whole. Um, it's also important to read the units of the axes. So sometimes they'll have um, like percentages or milligrams or time. Um, I know there was one question in, I think it's the practice exam, where they're, they're talking about the queen bee, and it's like mils of oxygen per milligram per hour, and you had to use that in the calculation of your subsequent questions. And I think if you don't read the units, you can get really lost there. So read the axes, read the title, and then read the units. These are really, really important. And only then after should you always start to interpret the data and draw conclusions there. Um, so if you guys have any questions about graphs or if you even have a graph that you're unsure about, uh, please feel free to message me or comment down below and I'll be more than happy to try and explain through some of the graphs that you're confused with. Um, as always, if you have found any value from this video, uh, please like, comment and subscribe.